Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Crisis on Infinite Earths. It's been a few days since I've done a video. I just took a little break because it was really intense with the three days that Crisis was on because I stayed up every night till God knows when, and I was just kind of worn out because it was very, very late every day, and I barely got any sleep. So that's why I've had a break for the past few days, but we are back. We are breaking down the trailer for part two the final two episodes of Crisis on Infinite Earth, so it's actually part four and part five of the crossover, but like part two because it's split into two parts. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DCTV videos later this year. Okay, so the first part of the Crisis crossover has been amazing. I wasn't so hot on episode two. I thought episode two was a little bit of like... An up and down episode but episode one for the most part was like really really good and then episode three was really amazing like seriously episode three was the best one by far and so I'm really liking it right now and I can't wait to see crisis return in January I think it's January 14th correct me if I'm wrong but it's going to be arrow and legends on the same night so that's going to be even longer because we have to watch the two episodes and then we review them so I don't know how we're gonna do that but we'll have to wait and see but anyway so let's go ahead and break down this trailer for part two of Crisis on Infinite Earths okay so the first shot of the trailer is of Barry and Barry is flying across the room and right now we don't specifically know where this place is but there is various shots that we'll talk about in a minute that is in the same place but you can see there's rubble all around he's being flung I don't know why he's been flung, like, has he been hit, has he been punched, it seems like maybe he's fighting with the anti-monitor or like a villain, I don't know who it could be, but anyway, so then we cut to the next shot, we see Barry, he's on the ground, he's obviously in his flash suit, but he's unmasked, which is very interesting, we get the light sort of beaming onto his face behind him, and then we get this, this is Oliver in the Speed Force, and he says, you're in the Speed Force, Barry, as Barry replies, or says prior, where am I? And then Barry, in response to that, says something else, which we'll get to in a minute. But this is Oliver, and he is the Speed Force. He is taking up that persona, or it could, in fact, be related to the Spectre and what happened with him at the end of last episode in Crisis. So I think there is a possibility, but the first idea that I got in my head was that yeah, this is maybe what Barry's seen the Speed Force as right now. Rather than seeing Nora, it's who he's lost recently that has made that connection with him. However, obviously there is a chance that this could be him, you know, playing the role of the Spectre because we do believe that Oliver is actually going to, you know, take over the mantle. He's going to be doing sort of Spectre stuff in this episode and the episode after. So that's you know to theorize about let me know what do you think about that in the comments down below then like i said in reply to this shot we get barry in this new one and he says oliver and it looks like he has a tear in his eyes his eyes are very shiny and it seems like it's in the same place and barry's wearing the same stuff so he's seeing oliver but he's seeing oliver in this new way because he doesn't know that oliver survived right all he knows is the Paragons have survived and everything else is destroyed. But remember, Oliver went off to be, you know, the Spectre or to go with the Spectre, who we were in introduced to last episode. So he very much so could have survived and I'm pretty sure he has survived due to the Spectre coming around to him. Okay, so let's move on to the next shot. So it's in the same place and we've got all the Paragons. So we got Kara, we got Lex. Obviously Lex took over Superman's because, you know, he changed it with the Book of Destiny, so he could survive. Then we've got Martian Manhunter, Jean, Barry, The Flash, Batwoman, Kate Kane. We've got Ryan Choi, and he's got a beard, which is very important to note. We'll talk about that in a second. And then we've got Sarah as White Canary. So they're in this place. So that is seven of them. And they're all lined up, and they are talking to someone, or there is a confrontation, and I believe this is actually Oliver that they're talking to. So, I don't know what specific place this is, like I said earlier, but, yeah. Anyway, so, talking about Ryan Choi and why he has a beard, at first I was like, is that the Spectre? Because it's not very good quality in this trailer, but, yeah, it's Ryan Choi, he's got a beard, because it seems like 
they've actually been trapped for a long time and it seems very likely that it could be in real time to you know the break that we've had for a month maybe that is part of the reason why they split it into two parts as a crossover and obviously this just is a visual representation of the time past whilst they've been stuck in this place where they ended at the end of last episode you know where time and space you know nothing really matters and doesn't exist because they're out of time and space okay so let's move on to the next shot so a very very crisp look at the anti-monitor so obviously in this scene there is a heavy green and blue color grade so you can tell this is you know in a completely different place to where we are normally and so the anti-monitor his suit looks really cool very comic book accurate and obviously the big difference from Crisis in the comics and Crisis on TV in regards to the anti-monitor is he obviously doesn't look anything like this in the comics I'm talking about Crisis on Infinite Earths version of the anti-monitor I'm not talking like any other iterations because the new 52 version of him kind of looks a bit similar to this anyway so in the comics he is massive he is humongous compared to all the heroes and obviously they're different heroes in Crisis in the comics so that's obviously going to change the dynamic maybe they didn't have to make him such a like beastly figure like he is in the comics but but so the lines that are uttered over this is the anti-monitor is at the dawn of time he's extremely powerful and it seems like this is actually Oliver saying this so he's got the knowledge and that is sort of part of the reason why I theorize that he could be the Spectre okay so let's move on to the next shot and this is really important and really exciting so we see the reverse flash like this is actually him so he's actually finally showing up and you know this has been a thing that we've been questioning for the longest time especially since we started seeing like the photos the trailers for crisis because you know the whole thing of the newspaper article was it was the flash missing vanishes in crisis whilst facing off against the reverse flash so it seems like the reverse flash is actually showing up which is very very exciting because to be honest, I wasn't expecting it because, you know, he hasn't shown up at all yet. And I think I sort of lost hope, but it seems like this trailer actually confirms that, yeah, Reverse Flash is here. Kind of hard to tell what's happening. Maybe this is in the Speed Force. Maybe it's actually in real reality. But it seems like the Flash is actually going to be facing off against Reverse Flash. And it's probably going to be the Tom Cavanaugh version because that's how we left him last time. Okay, so the next shot is... At the dawn of time, like I said, we said this line, it seems like Oliver is saying the line, and so, also, he continues and says, the eight of us might not be enough. Okay, so there's seven paragons, and Oliver, it seems like, is the one saying, the eight of us might not be enough, so Oliver is going to team up with them, and try to stop the anti-monitor, and he's the one with all this knowledge, I believe, because he is the spectre, or, obviously, he knows via the speed force. But, you know, that's to be debated, like I've said many times. Anyway, so we have our heroes down here. This is an overhead shot. It doesn't really show that much. But they're at the dawn of time. They're facing off against the anti-monitor, as you can see right here. There is a fight about to go on. He's obviously not very big, like I said. So he doesn't look that threatening, if I'm 100% honest. As of right now, just from the trailers. But we haven't seen much of him, to be honest. Okay, so we got the seven paragons here, and so they're all teaming up, and they're squaring off against the anti-monitor, and I'm not sure if Oliver's going to show up here or not, but we'll have to wait and see. Alright, so Barry's all suited up, and there is explosions going off in the background. I think that's Supergirl just behind him, and so he's just running off the screen in this shot, and he's going to attack. Alright, so we got Supergirl and Martian Manhunter as they are flying in the air obviously you can tell it's very much so cgi'd the color is very similar to the shot from before so it seems like this could potentially still be at the dawn of time but it's in a different location because you can see they're flying and in the background you can sort of see this like icy tundra place okay so we got lex luthor he's using kryptonite so i guess it could be against supergirl or like superman but I don't know why it would be against the anti-monitor unless there is like a group of villains or like some new villains that show up you know with reverse flash because reverse flash is in this trailer and maybe he needs to use kryptonite I don't know but it wouldn't make sense that he's using kryptonite on the anti-monitor unless this is something completely different but obviously the green reminds you of kryptonite okay so back at the dawn of time we got Batwoman she's shooting off her gun 
like I said, I don't know how she's going to defeat the Anti-Monitor with a gun, and I don't know how, like, Ryan Choi is going to do anything against him. Like, I don't know. Is it just me? Or I'm like, huh, how is Batwoman going to do anything, or Ryan Choi, against the Anti-Monitor if he's as powerful as he is in the comics? And, you know, he's destroyed all these Earths, so, I don't know. But, you know, that's the TV show obviously making it a bit easier for themselves. But that's not to say that I'm not excited because I'm so excited for this. Okay, so we got a shot of the anti-monitor and it's just very similar to one that we got earlier. We got this explosion and I think that's the sun or something there. I don't know what's going on here, but you guys will have to think about that. Then the final shot of the trailer is the Paragons all together. Ryan Choi is not in this shot. So, yeah. Very, very excited. I can't wait for Crisis Part 2 to come. And for the meantime, please be sure to subscribe if you're new and turn on notifications as we try and reach 100,000 subscribers. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.